We are days away from the midterm election and candidates running for office are trying to win over undecided voters. Hear from those running for governor and Wisconsin's first congressional district. The whole mission is to create more leaders, doers and owners. It's a home away from home with a purpose. The new community center looking to help black women follow their dreams. And it's a good day to be a Badger. We have highlights from the team's big win against Rutgers today. This is News 3 at 6. We are just days away from the midterm elections. Voters in southeast Wisconsin will select the replacement for Paul Ryan in the 1st Congressional District. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us live now from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with more on both candidates, Brian Stile and Randy Bryce. Adam. Well, Amanda, for the first time in 20 years, there will be a guaranteed new face representing the 1st Congressional District in Wisconsin. And both Randy Bryce and Brian Stile hope to be the person to replace House Speaker Paul Ryan, who will be retiring at the end of this term. And I caught up with both Bryce and Stile as they met with voters today. And one thing I asked them was how they plan to serve those living in Rock County. As Stile said, he'd like to continue the growing trend this county has seen in recent years. So not that long ago, the General Motors plant closed. We fell on hard times uh, and now we're coming back. Uh, we still have room to grow. And so it's how do we continue this growth uh, so that everybody's able to earn a high wage job and really live out the American dream. But Bryce says the strength of the county is its diversity, what she says he plans to represent. There's so much that that they offer here and just being able to represent the, those people and being here to listen to what they have to say. I think that's that's the biggest thing lacking right now in the first district is somebody that's present that's going to listen and then take those ideas to Washington, D.C. Now, Bryce and Style both admitted that one of their favorite parts about being on this campaign trail has been having the opportunity to meet new people in their district. And coming up at 10 o'clock tonight, we'll hear more from both Bryce and Style, including what their goals are, were they to be elected, and what some of the challenges have been along this campaign trail. That's coming up tonight at 10. Yes, definitely a race. Many will be watching closely. Thanks so much, Adam. Candidates running for governor of Wisconsin are also trying to win over voters before Tuesday. Today, Democratic candidate Tony Evers spent some time in the central part of the state. He held a rally in Appleton where he highlighted the majority, the major difference between himself and his opponent, Governor Scott Walker. People that he chose to be in his cabinet, he vetted them and they were doing work for him and they they came out within the last couple of weeks saying a this man has no integrity he's unfit for office he lies and most importantly all those things are bad but he puts his own political ambitions ahead of the people of Wisconsin Tomorrow, Evers plans to visit Racine, Kenosha, and Milwaukee. And Governor Scott Walker, along with Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish, made a stop in Platteville this morning at the, Grand, at the Grant County Republican office. The governor talked about a number of issues, including jobs, taxes, and health care. He told the crowd that while he's governor, every Wisconsinite with a pre-existing condition will be covered. He also talked about job creation in the state and how the Walker administration has jump-started jobs in the past eight years. I mean, this state was messed up eight years ago. Massive. I mean, we were we had double-digit tax increases. We had billion-dollar budget deficits. We had record job loss in the state. We don't want to go back to those days. We can't afford to turn back now. This was Governor Walker's first stop before he headed over to Hudson for a rally with Vice President Mike Pence. Make News 3 your election night destination for the fastest numbers and best analysis. At 7 p.m. here on WISC, CBS News national coverage will begin. Who will control Congress? We will break in with live local updates all night on WISC. Starting at 8 p.m., you can watch continuous live local uninterrupted coverage on our digital platforms, Channel 3000, Facebook, and on YouTube. Then at 9 o'clock, our local coverage will be available on Fox 47. And at 10 p.m., join us on WISC again for election night coverage. You can count on to be fast and accurate. Well, a nice dry day for a nice day for a Badger game, but rain is still possible tonight. Dave is here with your first alert forecast. 
Yeah, Amanda, we had that rain hold off for much of the day for this Saturday, but that's not going to be the case for very long. As we take a look at Doppler track, we could see some heavy rain showers moving through north central Iowa and some of those residual outer showers starting to move into southwestern Wisconsin as we speak. Downtown Madison looking at cloudy skies on the Edgewater Sky Cam currently at 44 degrees. East southeast wind at 7 miles per hour. Occasional showers moving through tonight. Temperatures in some other spots at 42 in Watertown, 46 in Janesville, and 40 in, Bra in Prairie du Chien and Platteville. Temperatures will stay in the 40s basically all night long. Wind speeds, they will increase tomorrow, but right now not too bad out of the east at about 8 to 15 miles per hour. So that rain moves in this evening, mostly cloudy with temperatures staying steady in the mid 40s. When I come back in just a few minutes, we will talk about more chances for rain and some windy weather into Election Day on Tuesday and your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. Here in Dane County, black women on average make $15,000 a year less than white women, according to a report, and $23,000 less than white men. A new center's mission is to change that and create a space for black women to feel at home in the Madison area. Our Madeline O'Neill is back from the grand opening today with those details. Maddie. Amanda, the Progress Center for Black Women in Fitchburg is a sort of hub for community members, but black women specifically, to work, take part in conferences, and just hang out. Its founder, Sabrina Madison, says black women don't have enough ownership in the city, and she hopes this center will change that. So to come in here to see art that looks like you on the walls, you feel ownership in the space. For founder Sabrina Madison, the Progress Center for Black Women is a dream come true. Uh this is just so beautiful. <laughs> like, I just can't like, I can't stop touching everything. I can't stop looking at everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's here because Madison put in years of hard work getting where she is today. When you're a single black woman, you're the head of your household, and you're making this horrible income, it is stressful. Yeah? Now she wants the center to help other black women follow their dreams, despite disparities they face. Right now, black women in Dane County earn on average 57 cents on a dollar. That's horrible. She says black women are a community worth investing in. The whole mission is to create more leaders, doers, and owners. That is like our overall big vision. <laughs> a vision that includes space to work, learn, and play. Did you see it on? With workshops, family nights, and a children's area. It feels like home, a home away from home. At the center's grand opening, PhD student Paris Wicker and her daughter are checking out its opportunities. I think a lot of people are, are very upset said about the disparities that are happening, but action needs to be done. And so I think having a space, having representation, having investment in the community, because oftentimes change uh, takes money, it takes resources. Whether through donating money or time, Madison says it will take the whole community support from investors like Betty Harris Custer. People like myself, business owners, especially women business owners, need to step up. And, and and be there for her in any way we can. If the community invests in the space, the space will always be open. A space where black women can follow their dreams, something Madison calls a worthwhile investment. I'm just, I'm happy. I'm so happy. I don't even want to leave. <laughs> The Progress Center will have an open house during business hours throughout next week, starting on Monday. After that, those who use the space are encouraged to make some kind of donation, and the eventual goal is to raise enough funds to build a permanent home for the center, which could also include a computer lab, community space, and affordable housing. All right, thank you so much, Maddie. And you can find out more information on blackwomen.org, centerforblackwomen.org, excuse me. A Wisconsin group is working to make sure people sign up and understand their health insurance policies. Enrollment for the Affordable Care Act is underway. People have until the middle of December to pick an insurance plan for 2019. Covering Wisconsin is holding special Saturday enrollment events until December 8th. Last year, I think the number was about 200,000, and we're hoping to do the same. We are offering assistance to the entire state. Um, we have an office here in Madison and one in Milwaukee, and we're available to help people over the telephone as well. Covering Wisconsin also has healthcare navigators. These people provide free in-person help to people enrolling in health insurance. You can learn more about the agency's services by visiting that address on your screen, coveringwi.org, or by calling the United Way's 211 line. 
The Badgers bounce back this week with a 31-17 win over Rutgers. Kevin Lewis has more from Camp Randall. It was not without drama. Starting quarterback Alex Hornibrook had to leave the game at halftime after hitting his head on the ground after being sacked at the end of the second quarter. Backup quarterback Jack Cohn came in, managed the game, led the Badgers to three touchdowns. Now Jonathan Taylor had a monster day, racking up 208 yards and three touchdowns. Cohn did just fine. Five for seven through the air with a fourth quarter touchdown. The Badgers gained bowl eligibility for the 17th straight season. Coming up in sports, we'll hear from head coach Paul Chris and some guys from the locker room as the Badgers get back on track with the win they needed against the Scarlet Knights. At Camp Randall, I'm Kevin Lewis, News 3 Sports. The Badgers play Penn State next week at Beaver Stadium. Kids today are all about technology, and most parents know limiting screen time is important. But there are other ways you can help protect your child's eyes and ears. What Consumer Reports recommends. That's next. Welcome back. Young kids spend more than two hours a day on devices like smartphones, tablets, computers, and TVs. Parents say they struggle with how much is too much. Consumer Reports and Leah Linshide share what you need to know about safer screen time and audio levels. Is this a common scene around your house? Hello. Valia Portella Di Viola is concerned that screen time and headphone use could be causing eye and ear damage to her teenage daughter. I find myself constantly telling her, you know, back off, back off from the phone, give yourself some some space. Our concern is is the effect on her vision over time. Eye doctors are seeing a marked increase in conditions like dry eye and nearsightedness in children. Looking at the screen up close can cause the lens of the eye to shift its focus and over time that can cause the eyeball to lengthen which can lead to or worsen nearsightedness. New research suggests that blue light emitted by smartphones, tablets, computers and TVs might over time damage the retina, the thin layer at the back of the eye that contains light sensitive cells. Experts agree that children's eyes need regular breaks from tech activities in what is called the 2020 rule. Every 20 minutes, look out a window or at an object that's at least 20 feet away for 20 seconds. When it comes to children's hearing, audiologists are concerned the continual use of headphones at unsafe volume levels might lead to an increase in hearing problems in kids and teens. Experts recommend that if you can hear the music coming from your kids' headphones when they're listening, it's too loud. Alternatively, if you're trying to talk to them and they're listening to their 
their headphones and they can't hear you, it's also too loud. When it comes to hearing safety, experts suggest the 80-90 rule. You shouldn't listen to music at 80% of the volume of your device for more than 90 minutes per day. Consumer Reports experts say the best thing to do is model good behavior. Kids are more likely to treat their own eyes and ears with care if they see you do it too. Coming up on News 3, Weeping Willows and a Moody Sky are creating a perfect picture background. How this family photo project is helping other families in need. That's next at 6. The rain moves in tonight across southern Wisconsin, and it looks like the wet and windy weather is here to stay. My first alert forecast is just a few minutes away. Welcome back. Some area families are helping fight cancer by getting the perfect family photo for their holiday cards. Today was the first day of the White Couch Project. Organizers take family photos of people with all the money raised going to the Carbone Cancer Center. Since its creation four years ago, the event has raised over $15,000. The photographer behind the project says they enjoy bringing families together. It's exciting to see them come and get their family photos during the holiday season while supporting something that they're so passionate about. I can see it in lots of their photos that they just like enjoy the event because they know that they're giving back. It's not just this family photo, but it actually has a lot of meaning behind it. Organizers say this year they've had more interest in the project than ever before. Volunteers are needed to help clean up Madison beaches tomorrow. The beaches are still recovered in trash and debris from this summer's historic flooding. Cleanup will be going on at 11 of the beaches in Madison. It starts at noon and runs for two hours, rain or shine. Oldbrook Park, Esther Beach and Bernie's Beach still need volunteers to help with trash pickup, raking, weeding and debris removal. You do not need to register, but volunteers are encouraged to bring their own tools. 
Well, hopefully it doesn't rain too much on those volunteers. They're doing so good. I they know. It's really happen. a necessary task that needs yeah. to be done, and Mother Nature is not making things easy, that's for sure. We're going to see that rain move into town over the next few hours across southern Wisconsin. We actually did start off with some peaks of sunshine this morning, but now not so much. You can see those clouds moving in from the south and west, and some pretty heavy rain affecting portions of central and north central Iowa. However, that rain is going to lose some of its luster as it gets closer to southern Wisconsin, but we still could see some downpours overnight and also into Sunday. Doppler track fairly quiet right now, but we are noticing some very light showers moving into the Platteville area right now. Now, our rain chances in Madison, they are going to remain pretty high over the next 24 to 48 hours. You can see in the bring the umbrella and expect to get wet category until we get to later on Sunday. That's when those showers, the first round of showers, I should say, will start to wrap up and then into later on Sunday and the start of Monday. I think we actually are going to be probably dry, but the clouds will stay with us. Then our next round of potentially messy weather arrives Monday night into Election Day on Tuesday. We have an alert day on Tuesday because of the rain and potential for windy weather, even some flurries possible by the end of Tuesday. That's a lot to handle, so let's break it apart, right? Temperatures right now are in the 40s in Madison, 43 in the Dells, 42 in Boscobel, and 43 in Monroe. And that's where those temperatures are going to stay overnight with these clouds and even with the rain coming in. Wind speeds are going to kick up tomorrow. Right now, not too bad out of the east at about 8 to 15 miles per hour, but they will be very gusty throughout the day on Sunday, about 35 to 40 miles per hour, not out of the question for some of us. Our high temperature trend, we're actually a little bit above average, believe it or not, for tomorrow and Monday, but then look at that bottom dropout. We are in the upper 30s and lower 30s, I should say, by the time we start next week, so very chilly weather on the way. Remember, fall back, share the information because we need to turn back time as we head into tonight and tomorrow morning. That is for our lovely anchor, Amanda Quintana, who reminded me of that before the show. Voting forecast, I hope that this forecast is not on the ballot because I don't think it would get many votes. But we do have an alert day in the forecast for Tuesday for the rain showers that will be with us pretty much all day. And some of us could be watching those showers end as a mix as we head into later on Tuesday. Tonight, temps in the 40s, occasional showers with us, windy and rainy tomorrow with mostly cloudy skies, temps in the 50s. So future tracks showing multiple rounds of showers possible over the next 24 to 48 hours and some downpours are possible as well. I do think